Hey, this is Zach. And I'm Jesse. Thanks for watching on Tesla Time News, episode 22. So let's start off this week. We've got a lot of stories. Our first story, Elon is boring. I, I don't find his stuff boring at all. This is cutting edge news. No, I mean, Elon is boring. How can you say that? The guy is the most amazing genius on the planet. Every day he breaks new ground. Yeah, no, I fully agree. He's incredible. He's a visionary. He's an entrepreneur. He's, he's shaping our world for a brighter future. Then how can you say he's boring? Because he is. Right in front of SpaceX headquarters, in fact. Elon tweeted this photo on Friday with the word Minecraft. Wait, what? Yeah, at the Hyperloop pod competition on January 29th, Elon gave a speech about innovation in transportation and about how he envisions the Hyperloop being a below-ground system. He said that while elevated trains are certainly possible, quote, you have to either go up or down. I think probably down. What, what is this photo about? Oh, yeah. Elon announced at the competition that they have started digging a hole on Crenshaw Boulevard in front of the company's headquarters. On January 29th, it was just a hole in front of his office, but now, a week later, it looks like it's becoming a tunnel. Elon said he thinks they can improve tunneling speeds by 500 to 1,000 percent. Check out this quote. So we're just sort of muddling along. We have no idea what we're doing. I want to be clear about that. <laughs> 27 teams from around the world competed on January 29th in the SpaceX-sponsored Hyperloop pod competition. The 27 teams first had to pass the vacuum functional tests and the external subtract tests to be approved to race in the Hyperloop tube itself. SpaceX has built the first functioning Hyperloop track at about half scale. It is a six foot outer diameter. It is 4,150 feet long and was built out of 50 foot sections of steel pipe welded together for two weeks. Then concrete was poured in the track with an aluminum subtrack that was then installed. This is the second biggest vacuum chamber in the world after the Large Hadron Super Collider. The track allows for maglev, air bearings, and wheeled teams. What does that mean? So basically, the Tesla SpaceX, the SpaceX engineers didn't want to predetermine what the pod should look like, so they made sure that the track can handle both magnetic levitation, mm -hmm. wheeled, so you can make your pod with wheels on it, or you can make your pod so that it has air levitation, air bearings. Interesting. Yeah. Pods ranged in length from one foot from the Japanese team, weighing it in only 30 pounds, to the Lehigh team that was 21 feet long and weighed over 3,000 pounds. Only three teams passed the vacuum test, Technical University of Munich, Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands, and MIT. The 35-person team of the Technical University of Munich appears to have hit speeds of 94 kilometers an hour and won the speed competition. The team from Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands had the highest overall score. Their pod rode on a levitation, stabilization, and braking system using permanent magnets. Wow. This summer, SpaceX will be hosting another pod competition focused on maximum speed. So, not a big surprise here. On February 1st, Tesla Motors has changed its name to just Tesla. This makes sense since the company now makes much more than cars like it did 13 years ago. Yeah, I think Nikola Tesla would be proud. The company today is making EVs, battery storage, solar panels and roofs. And who knows what it'll be making tomorrow? Electric pickup trucks, semis, and maybe even boring machines. Some Model 3 reservation holders have loudly removed their reservations over what they feel is a lack of outrage from Elon over President Trump's recent immigration policies. If you're interested in hearing more about this story, then check out our new segment we're starting this week, Tesla Time News In-Depth. Is that what we're calling it? I think either that or out of our depth. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Tesla Time News, out of our depth. <laughs> Vote for what you want <laughs> below. We've heard of many countries, including Portugal, France, Spain, Germany, and the Netherlands, vying for the next Tesla Gigafactory. Well, this week, a team of 40 gamers in Lithuania spent two days building a virtual Gigafactory in the Lithuanian town of Kruonis to get the attention of Elon. Tesla plans to make a decision later this year about where to locate the Gigafactory 2.0, which will produce both batteries and cars. Treehouse is a new sustainable home improvement store chain with two locations in Austin and Dallas, Texas. 
Treehouse will be opening its first store built from the ground up in June. This store is going to be really cool because yeah. it's going to be powered by over 500 solar panels. That's awesome. And it's going to store all that energy in two giant Tesla power packs that are going to be like behind glass in the store. That's awesome. Treehouse will distribute Powerwall home battery packs. The company will have demonstrations of the products they are selling like sustainable building products, home automation, and energy efficiency. An interesting note here, Tesla's first Dallas, Texas supercharger will be located in the parking lot of the new Treehouse store. Interesting. Indiana has been pushing for a new ban on direct vehicle sales by auto manufacturers. Yeah, this ban would have stopped Tesla from selling in the state. But after a public hearing on February 1st, an amendment to House Bill 1592 was made that essentially grandfathers Tesla and allows Tesla to continue selling directly to consumers in the state. The Roads and Transportation Committee voted 9 to 1 to recommend the amended bill to the Indiana legislature. Now, why did they go through all of this like so gm backed this bill to stop tesla right now they've amended the bill to allow tesla tesla would be the only company that would be allowed under the under this law so why even go through with the law then i feel like they're going to probably stop backing it because if they ever wanted to do a direct sale it would stop them. tesla would be the only <laughs> one they'd be grandfathered in funny so. how like you plan to do something and then it backfires on completely you. back democracies rock sometimes yeah. doesn't it it does <laughs> sometimes it does the province of ontario and canada's government have recently removed caps on ev incentives so now tesla buyers can get six to fourteen thousand dollars in ev incentives this change effectively makes Tesla's $11,000 cheaper in Ontario. Canada reached over 20,000 plug-in cars last year, with wow. Quebec province leading the way with over 12,000 EVs. Ontario province might be catching up now with that new incentive. There's been a lot of press about the results from the IIHS, or Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, test last week. The Tesla Model S has already received the highest five-star safety rating from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and a five-star rating from the European NCAP. The IIHS released its ratings for the Chevy Volt and Toyota Prius last month, and they both got the Top Safety Pick Plus rating. This week, IIHS released results for the BMW i3 and Tesla Model S. The i3 only got an adequate score for its head restraints in seats, which prevented the i3 from getting the top score. The Model S only got an adequate on the small overlap front crash test and a poor for its headlights, which kept the Model S from getting a top score as well. If you watch the slow motion footage of the crash test, mm -hmm. you can see the crash test dummy's head bumping into the steering wheel because the seatbelt restraint was not tight enough. Also, even though the Model S with smaller batteries passed the roof strength test, the S100D only got an adequate on roof strength because the car weighs more. Tesla issued a statement. We proactively develop updates and aggressively implement changes onto the production line in record time anytime there is a substantial benefit to customer safety. One of the improvements recently introduced in January 2017 specifically addresses the acceptable or second highest rating that the Model S achieved in the small overlap frontal crash test, and we expect new tests to yield the highest possible rating, good rating, in the crash worthiness category. IIHS tests get harder every year, and the IIHS will be retesting a 2017 Model S with those improved features, so we'll have to see if Tesla can improve its ratings. Tesla confirmed that they will be launching in the United Arab Emirates this month. Invites have gone out for the big event on February 13th at the Armani Hotel in the Burj Khalifa Tower, which is the tallest building on Earth. Elon Musk is expected to be there, since he will be attending the 5th World Government Summit on February 12th. Tesla posted new manager and technician jobs on its website for a service center in Dubai. We had reported about three months ago that Southern California Edison hired Tesla to build an 80 megawatt battery power station at Miracle. Loma in Southern California. This replaces a natural gas peaker plant that goes online during peak demand hours. The previous natural gas plant storage tanks had leaked, forcing the evacuation of 8,000 residents. Wow. Well, last week, after only 94 days, Tesla's power pack station went online. JT Straubel, Tesla's CTO, said, quote, There were teams working out there 24 hours a day, living in construction trailers and doing the commissioning work at 2 in the morning. It feels like the kind of pace that we need to change the world. He went on to state, It's sort of hard to comprehend sometimes the speed all this is going at. Our storage is growing as fast as we can humanly scale it. The Deputy Prime Minister of Sweden, Isabella Löfven, just tweeted on Friday, 
just signed referral of Swedish climate law binding all future governments to net zero emissions by 2045 for a safer and better future. Way to go, Sweden. Royal Dutch Shell, which is the third largest company in the world, announced that it will be deploying EV charging stations in Britain and the Netherlands later this year at their gas stations. Shell operates over 25,000 gas stations worldwide, and the company said it expects the transition will take decades. While they didn't release what kind of chargers they will be, they did say that most EVs should be able to charge up to 80% in 30 minutes, which seems to point to level 3 fast charging. Shell is not the first oil company to do this. Total, the French oil company, announced a $300 million investment in solar at 5,000 of their gas stations worldwide. Yeah, and Russia passed a new law that gas stations need to offer EV charging. Daimler has just announced a partnership with Uber to produce self-driving cars for the Uber platform by 2020. This sounds very similar to the Tesla network, which will be Tesla's version of an autonomous ride-sharing platform. At the National Auto Dealers Association annual convention in New Orleans last week, Audi of America president Scott Keogh made a surprising speech. He said, All this fright about where I'm going to get a charge is going to go away extremely fast. The technology on this front is moving at a staggering pace. You're going to be looking at a marketplace in the next 7, 8, 9, 10 years where for 30 or 40 some brands, their entire business is going to be battery electric vehicles. He went on to say, we have to look at alternative channels and start to make money. These cars are going to have to be fixed less, but you're going to have a host of opportunities around the battery and helping the customer in their home. You have the customers, you have the scale, you have the marketplace presence. You need to become the one-stop shop on electrification. You need to be a part of their whole electric ecosystem. Take a look at these stunning photos of a 200 megawatt solar fishery that came online in Sixi City in China's East Zhengjiang province. This $260 million project is three square kilometers of solar panels and is a dual-use solar project, making 220 gigawatt hours a year for $34 million a year in revenue and $2 million a year from the fishery. That means it will pay for itself in seven or eight years. This is amazing. Wow. Look at the scale. It's gigantic. Faraday Futures future is not looking so bright. Yeah, this week, North Las Vegas city manager Cheung Liu reported that Faraday Future will be building a 650,000 square foot factory. That's a lot smaller than the 3 million square feet that it originally planned, isn't it? The new factory will only be able to output 10,000 cars a year and won't be completed until 2019. Ouch! Weren't they supposed to be making seven models and outputting 100,000 cars a year? Li Echo, the Chinese company backing FF, did announce in December that they are planning to open a $3 billion electric car factory in China. Now, does that mean they're pulling money out of Faraday Future for their Chinese plant? I mean, either way, it seems like a bad sign for the startup. It does. So every week, as you know, we're going to be pulling out a comment that we think is great to talk about. And this week's comment is from Lucas Schmitz. He said, amazing story. Big rig rear ends Tesla Model S and the driver is perfectly fine. Wow. Look at the look footage at the, here. Look yeah, at this these is pictures. I mean, the driver was walked away from this accident. And that's a big rig. We're not talking about another car hit it's the not back. Another it's, car. it's a giant 18-wheeler. Completely demolished the back of this car. Yeah, so I mean, we were just talking earlier about the safety ratings. This is real-life data. This is showing how safe the cars really are. Right. I mean, I'm afraid of being rear-ended by, like, a small car. Right. I can't even imagine being rear-ended by a big rig. I know. Oh. And then, so this Tesla was actually being sold. It was sold on eBay. Mm -hmm. It was being driven to its new owner. And before it could get there, it got into this accident. Wow. So just a reminder to you guys out there, when you're buying and selling cars, don't cancel the insurance until the car is completely in the new owner's hands. Wow. Because you wouldn't want that to happen and you just canceled the insurance. Right. Special thanks this week to our viewer, Peta K, who sent us these photos of the Mount Gilead, Ohio supercharger. He says... Awesome location with a car wash on the same property, plus a bakery and a short walk to McDonald's. I'm wondering if the power packs are for a future solar install. Interesting. So these pictures here do show what appear that they could be power packs, mm -hmm. um, or they could just be the standard transformers that we see at, at stations. We don't know. We've always conjectured about this. So if anyone out there knows the answer, if these are power packs or not, we'd love to know the answer to that. There are no other newly opened superchargers this week, but there is a new one under construction, the 8-stall in Waterloo, New York. 
Yeah, so if you're driving around and you happen to be near Waterloo, take some pictures or video of the construction. That's always interesting. Yep. Um, and if you're near one of the new superchargers that has opened that we've mentioned in earlier episodes, please go by, take some photos, do a review. We'd love to hear about it and post it here. Yeah. Um, and just because it's under construction, don't worry about it. We know what a supercharger is going to look like. We care more about what's around it. You know, what kind of shops, what kind of stores. How far off the highway. Right. Are you near a, you know, a hotel? It's important to know if you're going on a long car trip. Special thanks to Jared, who sent us this clip from Australia. Hey, Jesse and Zach. I'm Jared. I'm here at Ballarat, Australia, checking out the new Tesla Supercharger. It's looking good around here. It's a nice big shopping center, so people who need to shop around can park their Teslas here and get charged up. Go grab some food and all that. It's nice. I haven't seen any Teslas without the Supercharger, but when the Model 3 comes out, I'm sure this will be used many times by many people. Anyway, that's the Ballarat Charger for you. Now you know. Thanks for watching so much, everybody. If you want to support us, please think about going to Patreon and becoming one of our Patreon supporters. We really do value you, and we need you to keep this channel going. Also, don't forget, like and subscribe. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching. Now, now you know. know.